why can't we do the same thing? Right. You may you may just not have the right spirit connection with that person. Right. So just find another one. We just can't give up on each other. That's, that's the thing. I just wanna I just wanna get back to the basics where we love each other and be more community based and more community bound. Um, and you know, reach out, give. And so if everybody's doing that, then everybody's receiving and giving. If everybody's giving, then it's a complete cycle. And um, I think, you know, we just gotta put that forth effort toward it. Okay, and we're gonna. Can we give it up for the next generation of Thank you, Janine. So, Mark, um, so Royal Status. I know you have multiple businesses within that. Explain like what they are, what inspired them, and talk about some of the biggest concerns in your part of the industry. Okay, um, well, first and foremost, we're obviously barbers. Uh, we did do facials for a while, but our clientele is just, it's been going out of the roof lately. Like, everybody wants a haircut, gotta have a haircut. We're appointment only. Um, every service is 30 minutes at a time, including beer, including shampoo. We've got it down to a science. We've been, uh, myself, I, I started cutting around 12. Uh, I tried everything I could to get out of cutting hair. It was always just a hobby, just something I did for uh, younger brother and cousins and friends because we were all um, products of single parent households and we just couldn't afford it. So I just did it in the back porch for five bucks for everybody and it was never a thing. It was never a career objective for me. It was just community. I love people. I love talking. All I do is talk all day, every day. I, I need a talk show. So, <laughs> um, so it, just, it, it just turned into something and, and it just grew into its own monster after a while. I, like I said, I've worked everywhere you can think of. I've been a busboy at a restaurant. Foot locker, um, man, thrifties, you've been around that long, you know? <laughs> like, man, you name it, Robinson's May, I just, and with that, I'll be 40 on Friday, so I'll be like this, but, um, yeah, I've just been around a while, and, and, and what's crazy is that the blessing was uh, all the customer service experience I got from working all those jobs. And then uh, I tried again, got out of high school, and then went to college. I was like, okay, I'm going to get me a degree. I'm going to get out of this hair industry one way or another. Nope, God kept pulling me back in. So every time I tried to get out, I kept real, getting real back in, and I just I stuck with it. And before you knew it, um, I was able to bring all of that professionalism, customer service, um, interaction with people into what I did behind the chair. And um, I was at a shop for some years like 15 years, and the, uh, the owner and I weren't seeing eye to eye. Like, I'm a bit younger than I, uh, he was, and I was the manager of the shop. It was like 13 chairs, and I was the manager, but he was, he just kept dismissing all my ideas. I'm like, bro, we gotta start thinking forward because eventually we're gonna get run over. Competition is gonna, you know, your gentrification, everything's gonna happen to you if you don't happen to it first. And so he wouldn't listen, and I eventually got with one of my coworkers, someone who was, even, you know, you can be equally yoked with a friend as well. Yeah. So I got with someone who was equally yoked. He and I talked and networked, and we met probably every other Monday for somewhere between four to eight hours for about four years before we got where we are now, three years ago. And we've just been moving ever since. And my, my personal motto is precision, punctuality, and professionalism. Those are my things. And um, I take that and I hold it near and dear to my heart every service I provide, and, and that was just important to me, you know, to project that to the industry because we have a lot of clients, and just people, you know, they, they want you to live in the dark ages. They want you to, you know, be able to negotiate your rates and things of that nature. That's not what I'm here for. I am a professional. This is what I present. This is what my rates are, and you can take it or leave it because I know what I'm worth, you know? so. Just do your best. Um, there is, I heard somebody, I, I wanted to mention it um, because someone mentioned it earlier, but um, there is no competition when you're in your own lane. Don't worry about whatever somebody else down the street's charging. Um, somebody taught me you can be a block away from hell and still live in heaven. So do, do what you do and do, do it your best, you know? So that was a. Do you have any questions for Mark? What did you want to do before hair pulled you back? I wanted to be B. Diddy, man. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, you know, that's, that's where everybody is 16 wants to be. You know? So, you know, that was just the thing. But, uh, no, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm in the TV and film. My degree is uh, electronic media, film production, and I have a minor in business marketing as well. So, well, I got a few commercial and TV ideas, scripts are floating out there. We'll see whatever catches. But, but until then, you know, handling my purpose for now. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, we're inside five three one three 5313 as well in uh, region of Bra I mean, Brand Beach, I'm sorry. Yes? I just want to say I thank you because barbers were doctors, yes, cosmetologists were nurses, mm -hmm. they did it with babies. So you all are the beginning of us. And I just want to say how much you are appreciated. Natural hair care? Oh, yes. Yeah, if I care for your hair, we can do anything. And I've had 20 years of it, cut it every five, and gave it to the babies at the hospital. So they could have hair when they go through their cancer treatment. I appreciate all of you. You are the pioneers. Pivot Point got a barber program that's about to go off the charts. Get ready. Yeah. Natural hair care? Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> We also oh, yeah. um, we also service clippers. Um, we do sharpening, replace blades, replace cords, uh, all clippers, uh, no matter what they are. We also replace uh, hot comb handles. You know, y all, y all, they get loose after a while, and y'all start wiggling out. We replace hot comb handles. Um, we re record. What else do we fix? Uh, blow dryers, stoves. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So uh, that that just came about, just you know, based on necessity. Like, you know, you mess up your clippers, right? And it was like, man, I'm either gonna not cut today, or I'm gonna figure this out. So over the years, I've just been able to, you know, accumulate a, a huge drawer of stuff. <laughs> you know, clippers that do and don't work anymore, and you know. It was just a blessing by messing so many of them up. I tried to finally figure out how to get them to work right. So yeah, and I just turned it into a business. Like, hey, you know, there are other people that require these services as well. So we, we also do that. And um, we wholesale products. We uh, wholesale pomade, um, uh, hair and skin oils, beard oils as well. Um, and something else we do. We, well, I'm also working on a few things because uh, I can't do this forever, you know. My, my goal is to get from beyond and be from behind the chair. So, yeah, I'm working on a few projects now to um, uh, not just mentor, but, you know, some mental health stuff. I'm trying to put together some men's workshops because uh, it's, it's going to be a three-part series on fitness, uh, mental health, and emotional uh, intelligence because a lot of us are just reacting to stuff and just making our own problems or compiling problems. And I'm talking to these men in the chair and they just going through it and I'm like, some of this is you, brother. Let's backtrack, backtrack a few steps here. Like, you know, that's, uh, yeah. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm a true empath and I take a lot of that home with me, you know, and I have to, and it's hard to decompress, you know, from everybody else's stress and trauma. You touching somebody, that's their energy, you know. Yeah, yeah you don't realize how much of an impact it has on you. So I, my heart goes out to the people who can just shut that off, but I can't, you know. So those, those are some things I'm working on now to get, get from behind the chair and, you know, get into the communities and go further along. So you, yeah, yes, I have a question. Oh, you Wait, um, so you said something about the mental, you, aren't, aren't you doing something with the mental health? Well, I, I do a lot of panel discussions. Like what is it called, right hearts or something? Oh yeah, a friend of mine is yeah. a, um, oh yeah, my friend Joy. So you can find her at, at Joy Hearts on Instagram. A friend of mine, Joy, is a uh, therapist and a life coach. And she, uh, I call her, our, I, I call us her 12 disciples. So she picked us out, um, 12 of us based on the things that she knew we were capable of and what we do well. And my thing was, uh, it's bigger than you. You know, you gotta take care of yourself so you can help everybody else. And 
if you're not taking care of your own mental health, your own emotional intelligence and your fitness, you're going to be lacking. You know, and like I said, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. So I'm working with a few different people in a few different, you know, places. And it's all coming together. But yeah, you can check out Joy. She's a really, really sweet person. And we're just trying to get us together. You know, like we said, so many of us have been talking about, you know, us not taking care of each other and us not supporting each other. It's because we've been set back so far. You know, we're descendants of slaves. And, you know, now we're just now starting to take care of ourselves. You know, we've just been so long and so many years of just um, suppressing our own issues because I got to go to work, because I got to go work on this plantation, or whatever it is, of providing for these family members. What do we do for self, you know? So now we're just this new generation of, of self-awareness. And uh, I'm just trying to help any and everybody I know that gets into my chair who has a platform. I'm trying to help branch that out in whatever way I can to support. Oh, no. Well, she was asking about you. <laughs> I was going to ask about you um, doing the Clippers and everything, but I want to ask you as a fellow lady barber, I am also a licensed barber, you guys. They didn't ask me any barber questions. That's the only reason why I didn't talk about that. That's a whole big ball. I was trying to stay within the talking limits, but I should have went on and talked anyway. <laughs> but um, as a lady barber, when you first started, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Because I know when I first started, the guys used to be hey, I was I've been cutting since 1989, and the guys they used to they used to be hating. When they would see the sisters coming in, and I was one of the baddest female barbers back then. I was working at the cosmic store. That's where there's mostly female barbers in there, and so. Yeah, I've heard, I mean, guys have told me to my face, like, I never let you touch my hair. Right. Uh, I never let a girl touch my hair. And I just be like, well, I started, I turned it into a slogan. I, I started saying, well, we know what we want to see. We know what we like. And so uh, that's what I, I made my LLC, a ladies touch LLC. And that's because initially that's what kept me going in barbering. And, and so eventually my, my work just had to speak for itself because it's still some guys that, that still to this day won't, won't uh, you know, stick to their guns. I'll never let a chick cut my hair. Yeah, I, I have a lady barber too. And just on Saturday, there was these two guys in the shop, right? So they were waiting for the other barber. And then she was like, I'll cut your hair. So he was like, all right, he did it. <laughs> By the time he got done, the other dude was like, I'm waiting for her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know why we give y'all a hard time. Yeah, and I've even experienced like, um,